Hello everyone, welcome back to another video about Assassin's Creed. So today, we're going to be talking about all my opinions on the game in general, because we've had about a week to reflect on the game and all that good stuff, and think about the game in general, and today I'm going to be giving all of my opinions on everything of the game post E3, because E3 is officially ended now, it's all done. You know, it's all done. We've seen all the gameplay that we could at E3 now. So I'm going to be going ahead and giving all of my general opinions on the game. I'm going to be talking about the graphics, the open world, the activities, the gameplay, and the skills, gear, and the XP in the game. Everything that's important in the game, I'm going to be talking about in this video. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into this video. So the first thing you notice about Assassin's Creed Origins, before you see any of the gameplay, before you hear anything about the game, the first thing I noticed was that the graphics of the game were absolutely beautiful. They are astonishing. They're better than any other Assassin's Creed game before it, and especially considering it's such a vibrant palette of colours in ancient Egypt, the game is genuinely beautiful. The water looks insane, the awesome sand dunes look insane, the different little civilizations look insane, and there's also an amazing shot of the lighthouse of Alexandria, and the graphics just look absolutely beautiful in it. In that initial gameplay demo we got at E3 when we first saw how the game actually played, the shots of Senu flying over Egypt do look absolutely beautiful, and I'm still still cannot believe until to this day, the game looks absolutely fantastic. The beautiful graphics of the game only complement the vast open world that they've built in this game. You're able to explore the whole of Egypt in this game, all the way up to Alexandria and everything in between. There's loads of oases, there's loads of different small settlements and ruins to explore. It just looks really fucking cool. And there's just so many different places in this game that you can go to, which makes the world so vast and so diverse. It's really nice to see that we have an actual diverse open world because the recent Assassin's Creed games have just been inside of one city, whereas in this game, there's two cities, Memphis and Alexandria. Obviously, Alexandria is going to be the more huge, kind of colossal one, whereas Memphis is a more minimalistic um, city, but it's still very important nonetheless. But it's great to see all these different environments and the different spaces in between these cities. It's not just one city, it's a whole country. So there's going to be so many more places to explore instead of just having shitty London that looks the same all over. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm English, you know, I love going to London, it's great. But it's a shit place to go into in, in, in an Assassin's Creed game. It's a really bad place. Everywhere looks exactly the same. A place like ancient Egypt, especially having the whole of the country of Egypt in the ancient times, is a lot more interesting than just having London in the Victorian era. Anyway, the open world is huge, it's beautiful, and it's also going to be littered with many different activities and side quests for us to do, such as various different tombs to complete, which was specified up to 20 tombs for us to do in the open world, side quests to help passing strangers, stargazing puddles, gladiator arenas, and so much more. I do not doubt there will be loads more activities to do in the game. There's definitely going to be loads more stuff for us to do in the game that they haven't shown in any of the demos, because they want us to have some form of mystery in the open world, and some form of discovery when exploring around and seeing different side quests. Obviously the team is taking more of an RPG approach to the side quests in the game, so instead of there being like different missions for different historical figures, it's just going to be missions for passing strangers and they're going to have rewards, XP you get from them, and it's just a very more RPG based system than in the previous Assassin's Creed games, and I think this is a lot better because a lot of open world games nowadays are taking on more of an RPG role, and that has been such a great decision for all the developers that have made those games. It's such a good way of doing things, especially in open world games, it makes everything a lot more interesting, and it makes content a lot more plentiful. Now the actual gameplay of the game, and how the game plays, is a cause of concern for many people, although I don't really feel the same way. I think the gameplay in the game is fine. It looks fluent and fun, which is all that matters really. Some animations can be slightly jittery, however we've only seen an alpha build of the game, so all of the small problems could be ironed out upon release. I definitely think they're still working on many aspects of the game, and they're going to try and polish around the edges of all of these different problems that are in the game. Now, you have the alpha, which was the most stable version of the game. The game is most likely in beta now, and will be approaching a nearly finished product over the next few months. However, they decided to show us the alpha build as that was the finished version of that current stage of the game and was therefore the most stable. If they showed us the beta build, it may have been even more glitchy because they hadn't been working on it as much as the alpha, but the alpha was the most stable version of the game. There may have been loads of different, like, 
jittery animations here and there and a few things that shouldn't have happened, although I think these things will definitely be ironed out of the game upon release. Something that many people are upset about is the combat of the game. I already made a video on this stating my opinions on the combat, however I'm just going to go over them very very quickly for everyone that hasn't seen that video. I think the combat looks satisfying and rewarding. Again, some animations such as the dodge animation, which is an animation that looks very very strange. It, it would be nice if they modified this slightly to make it look more grounded and overall more realistic. However, I've got no more concerns regarding the gameplay of the game. It plays perfectly fine. I haven't played it yet, obviously, for myself, but from the gameplay I've seen and the opinions of the people that have actually played it, it's a very smooth game to play. Obviously, horses and camels are back, and you can also do combat on various different mounts, which is interesting to see. You can shoot your bow, and obviously, you'll be able to use melee weapons too. But one of the most significant gameplay features in this game is the bow and arrow gameplay. Now, there's not really been any Assassin's Creed game before that's had a bow as one of your primary weapons. You could say Assassin's Creed 3, but that's more of a secondary ranged weapon that you can't use in the same way as you can use it in Origins. In Origins, it seems like more of a third person shooter, whereas in Assassin's Creed 3, the bow is more of a secondary tool that you use when you don't have any ammo in your gun or if you're hunting animals. Ashraf said in an interview that you could even play the game solely just using the bow if you want in the style of a third person shooter with a bow and arrow, which is quite interesting, which proves that this game really does cater to anyone's playstyle and you can play the game however you want. Obviously there are also the underwater sections and the water sections in general. You can drive the little falukas over it, there's obviously the Mediterranean too, but the main part is the underwater sections in the Nile Delta and the different water areas in Egypt. It's really cool that any underwater area is completely explorable there's treasure under there, there's tombs under there, there's temples, various different weapons and armor that you might be able to find there. It's really cool, it's kind of like the different diving sections in Assassin's Creed 4, however this is completely seamless and you don't need to go through a loading screen to be able to get under there. You can just dive down and do whatever you want. You can also hunt various different animals like hippos and crocodiles in there, which is really cool too. Although I am really interested to see how these naval missions play out, because obviously in the different trailers we saw ships that had rams on them, which were definitely point towards naval gameplay and also one of the exclusive missions for Assassin's Creed Origins is a naval mission so I want to know how this is. Obviously there's not going to be cannons because cannons weren't invented around this time, you know it's 49 BCE or whatever and I reckon it'll be more like fire arrows, ramming and all that good stuff that made old naval combat very unique but you know, obviously it's it's safe in the hands of the Black Flag team. They made a great naval combat with Assassin's Creed 4, and they're making a great naval combat with this game, I hope. Also, bear in mind this isn't a main feature of the game. They're not going to force you to do naval missions. You only have to do this if you want to, and I reckon there'll be more side quests in the game where you just have to, you know, do various different naval missions. There may be one or two missions in the main story where you have to do naval combat over the Mediterranean, but other than that, I think on the whole, they're going to be side content for you. And it's a welcome addition to the game in general, like I don't mind, it's it's a cool feature to add in the game, because they're not pushing it, they're not forcing it, and you can definitely see that it's not a main feature of the game. Skills, gear, and XP have taken on a more of an RPG style, you get XP from enemies, which is very straightforward, obviously XP is also rewarded as a reward from quests, gear being the same as well. They've taken on a very straightforward RPG design with these two features. However, the skill system is a huge tree of skills that doesn't go down in a linear line like most games do. It actually forms more of a huge circle, so there is more than one way to get each skill. Now, this is a lot better than how other RPGs do it. Other RPGs go down in a straight line, they have three different branches, and that's all you can do. However, in this game, it goes around in a huge circle, which means you can get the exact skills you want without having to buy pointless skills to get to the skill you want, which I think is really, really awesome. It's better because it allows people to craft their place and their own assassin style. So if you want to be a warrior, you can put all the skills into the warrior skill tree and not have to worry about going and doing the other skill trees. You can just specifically do that one. You don't have to do the other ones. This means you don't have to waste skill points in random skills that you don't want just to get to the specific skills that you do want. And I think this is a great addition to the game. Now lastly, I want to talk about Bayek. Now we know Bayek is the last Medjai and that makes him a very interesting character because obviously he's a middle-aged man. We don't see him for the beginning of his journey like we do with the other assassins. He's already an established person 
in the world of ancient Egypt. Ashraf Ismail described him as the embodiment of the values of ancient Egypt because obviously this game is set where the new and old world are clashing and this clash creates the Assassin Brotherhood. Ashraf and his team want to tell the story of an older man which I think is very cool because all the time we go from this person from their childhood whereas in this game Bayek is already a man, he's already experienced a lot of things, he's protected pharaohs, he's been trained in the combat, and he's already been through a lot of stuff, so it's cool to see that he is now going to have to face different things, such as a new order that has appeared, and a man called the Crocodile, and he's going to have to form his own order of assassins to be able to stop them from ever reaching power. Obviously there's going to be a lot of the initial assassin traditions in the game, such as cutting off the ring finger, wearing a hood, the hidden blade, the assassin assassin ceremony and all that good stuff in the game as well. It's going to be really cool to see where all of the assassin traditions from Assassin's Creed 1 came from because obviously Bayek is the founder of the order. But overall Bayek as a character does intrigue me. He seems quite cool, like a very well-rounded character. I've already got some form of attachment to him after watching various different gameplay demos because he does seem like an all-around cool guy. But we'll be able to see more of him in the game, we'll be able to see more of how he progresses as a character and how his journey takes him to be this wise person that forms the order of the assassins. Overall, I'm just very excited to get my hands in this game so I can finally see every little detail of it, go explore the open world, get completely immersed and lost in it, upgrade my character with skills, craft loads of different things, get loads of weapons, and also obviously see how the Assassin Brotherhood was formed with all the various different traditions. So that is it for the video guys, hope you guys enjoyed, be sure to go ahead and like and subscribe for more Assassin's Creed news and content in the future and also remember to comment down in the comment section below telling me what you guys think of the game as a whole do you like it are you excited for it and tell me why so i'll see you guys in the next one